Jeff Rowe from Two Hacks Garage here. Well, as you can see, I'm back at Jimmy's. I have been all over the place. Kyle's place, my place, back at Jimmy's. Like I said, it's that time of year we get really, really busy. Uh, this isn't going to be about anything engine building. We're not going to really do anything. I just wanted to share something with you. As you can see, we got a small block Chevy in here, and we got a small block Chrysler in here. Don't pay attention to that. It doesn't really mean anything. Just projects that we're going to talk about later. Um, what I did want to talk about is chamfer. Every time you guys tear an engine down or rebuild an engine, there's always a chamfer on top of the cylinder. A lot of people don't exactly realize what that is there for and what it was intent or how it's put in there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk a little bit about that. It's actually quite simple, but it does serve a purpose in kind of two ways. So with that guys, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the chamfer, what we use to put that chamfer in there because you can do it yourself without having to have a fancy old school boring bar, which does have a chamfering tool. There is something that you can get to do it on your own, effectively, the right way, and on a budget, and all you need is drill. So with that, guys, let me show what we got going on here. All right, well, first off, this is a Magnum 5.2 liter V8 Chrysler engine. Um, this is gonna be a project coming up soon. It's not gonna be 5.2 liters. It's gonna be much more than that when we're done with it. So, but don't mind that. Um, what we're talking about is actually chamfer. We just had this one, the, the surface decked on this. Uh, so the cylinder heads, gaskets and all that will mate perfectly good. And on top of it, everything is true. Um, but one thing, if you look here, on here, the chamfer's gone. We still need to machine this engine, but what you have here is a real sharp knife edge on there. Um, if you don't chamfer that, believe it or not, that sharp edge here, it can actually prevent uh, your pistons, when you go put it in there with the piston rings, trying to get in there, slip it in there correctly, they'll hang up on there. Also, with that sharp edge, that knife edge right there, that can actually get hot and cause detonation and pinging. So it's kind of two reasons why that chamfer is put in there. Let me show you the block that we just got done chamfering. So if you look here, guys, this has the chamfer in it here. Um, this is also, this is a small block Chevy for another future project that we're going to talk about. Um, it's not 350 cubic inches. Well, it won't be. It'll be much more than that. Seems like a common trend there. Everything we do never sticks to the uh, original manufacturer cubic inches. Anyway, that doesn't matter. We'll get to that in a later video. But if you look, we've already machined this engine and we've already honed it and the chamfer is in there. So what does this chamfer actually do with this? Well, if you look closely, that's at a 45 degree angle. So when you go to put your pistons in with the rings, the rings can kind of compress against there and slip on in. It makes, and one of the main functions of this, it just makes it easy to install the pistons with the rings on into the cylinder. There's different types of ring compressors, the cones and all that that really help, but this just from the manufacturer and when you machine it, this just adds an extra little bit of comfort space if you want to say, um, to get those in there. Other part about it is without that knife edge, if you look compared to the other one, see how it's nice and 45 degree angle there. It's not sharp, it's more of a rolled angle compared to what we going on here with that sharp edge like that. Well, like I said, that sharp edge can actually get hot, create detonation and pinging. So what do we use with this? Well, it's quite simple. If you look here, this bore size here, this is actually a 4060 bore. And this one here is not. Offhand, I can't remember what it is, small block Chrysler. Doesn't quite matter, but it's smaller. So what do we use? Well, let me show you. Be right back. So you're wondering what we use to do this. Well, we do have a fancy old school boring bar. It's a Van Norman 777S. And it does have a tool on that that you can put on there and it creates that 45 degree angle of chamfer. However, not everyone has an old Van Norman bore bar. But Goodson Supply Company, who makes all kinds of cool specialty engine building tools, you name it, they have all kinds of neat stuff. What they do is they sell this mandrel here. It's meant for a drill. As you can see, you just put it in there, you can tighten it up. And it has different grit chamfering cones. And this one here, well, as you can see, it's a little bit war, but it's still got quite a bit of use. Long story short is that goes on there just like that, as you can see, and it's 45 degrees. And I think this is a five inch cone. So whatever bore size you're working with, it's gonna work. So what you end up doing with this is you put it on your drill and you go on here like this with your drill and you spin it and that puts that 45 degree chamfer. Since it's rubber, it's really not ever gonna get out of um, 
uh, round and it conforms to that. So basically guys, that's all you do is you turn this on with your drill, spin it a little bit, not a whole lot. Now this is a heavier grit one. We do have a finer one to make it fine on the second step. And you just keep on going down your cylinders with that. Like I said, this is a really good tool. This is a DIY type thing. Um, nice part about it is it's affordable. Uh, the mandrel is very heavy duty. It's going to last a long time and you can get these cones, you know, pretty cheap. So this is the 45 degree set. I think you can get the cones for maybe around 25, 20 bucks a set. This honestly, I don't remember, but I'm going to put a link into the description, um, to Goodson. So you can, if you want to, you can go there and order your own kind of neat. You can do that all on your own. And you know what, when you can do things on your own, you don't have to have fancy tools. That's a huge plus and a huge, huge win for all of us. See you in a minute. All right. Well, I hope you learned something. I know a lot of people know that what's that is there for, um, kind of explained it. I didn't show you, we've already got this done. Uh, it's been a really busy for Jimmy and I today of getting stuff prepped. Like I said, two future projects here. One's another Chevy and one's actually a Chrysler actually getting back in the Mopar world. It's nothing for me. It's for a good friend of mine that helps me out and do a lot of photography and videography. So with that guys, that chamfer, two reasons, pretty simple. One, to make installation of piston and rings easier. And the other part is keeping that knife edge off of there creates a situation in your cylinders where it's not going to get hot, cause detonation and cause pinging. Uh, so with that guys, it's busy. I got a whole lot of stuff to do. Got a lot of cleaning. Got a lot of prep. A lot of whole lot of cool content coming up. But yeah, Goodson makes that tool so you can put the chamfer in there yourself. 45 degree angle. Doesn't take long at all. In fact, it's actually quicker doing it this way than it is doing this way. Both have that 45 degree angle desired out, outcome on it. But you know what, guys? I think I'm going to stick with the Goodson tool and stick with my old school boring bar to do the hard work. With that, we'll see you tomorrow. Later.